Well, good morning and welcome to today's episode of Random Thoughts. Here's a thought, and it's, it is an interesting one. What if the intent of the commandments were reversed? Meaning, what if the first commandment said, you shall have other gods before me? And they're all reversed. They're all backwards like that. What would that describe? And more importantly, what does that do to the church? Interesting conundrum. And we'll talk about this later in today's episode of Random Thoughts. We'll be right back. Back to today's episode of the Word. What if the commandments were reversed? Now, when I first heard that question, my brain went to reversed. Okay, so commandment number 10 becomes commandment number 1, commandment 9 becomes 2, 8 becomes 3, etc. We flip the order of the commandments. And then one of my co-leaders of our Bring Your Own Bag and Bible gathering time, which we held last night, posted a link in an email to me to this particular article. It wasn't about reversing the order. It was reversing the intent, making the commandments opposite of what they are. For example, like I said in the opening, what if commandment number one said, you shall have other gods before me? And that opened up a very wonderful dialogue and discussion about what that would do. The interesting thing is, whether you look at commandment 1 through 10, and we reverse the content, we flip it to its opposite, that is descriptive of what's going on in society today anyway. The interesting thing I really look at in this context is <clears throat> it's a descriptive, it's, it's not a commandment. When we flip the content, when we make the content opposite of what it already is, we make the commandments not a commandment, but a description of the current condition of human race. And let me add into that a little further, not just the current condition of the human race, the way the human race has been since the day after the fall, the day after Adam and Eve's sin and disobedience to God. Human nature has been flipped on its head. It has been reversed. Because if you really think about this for a moment, if, and I know that's a huge if right now, if Adam and Eve did not choose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, meaning they obeyed God rather than disobeyed God, would we need the Ten Commandments to begin with? I get this fundamental type of question, not exactly the same words, but I get this question from my third and fourth graders when I teach the uh, Bible content to them uh, on Tuesday mornings. I'm getting the same question. I'm getting the same question. What if Adam and Eve didn't disobey God? We would be living in a whole different world. But the reality is, they did. And to identify us as Christians, got, well, and originally as the people of the Jewish nation, because that's to whom he gave it, gave the commands. To identify them, it's a mark of identification. Think about this a minute. The commandments not only define what we should, what we should not do. Okay? That's why they're called commandments. These are the words I am telling you. This is what you must do. But it also is a, a marker, an opportunity to identify who I am to be. You hear, like, for example, in... 
the third commandment. Now, we order the commandments slightly different than some other Christians, so bear with me. But the, our understanding of what the third commandment is, you shall uh, honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does it mean to honor the Sabbath day? Let's stop and say okay, three, two, one. Let's look at the context of the second commandment. You shall not use, misuse, uh, you shall not use as empty the name of the Lord your God. Well, that commandment is about identification, identity. God, Yahweh, that's his name. Remember when Moses asked God at the site of the burning bush on Mount Sinai? He asked, well, what is the name when I talk to, to my fellow Israelites? What is your name? And God said, Haya Yahweh, which basically means I am who I am. I am, I am who I am. That's Literally, that's what it translates as. So, I am who I am. That's God's name. I am who I am, Yahweh. We don't want to misuse that name. We don't want to use it in a manner that is flippant or a manner that is demeaning to the nature and the position of God. See, that's what identifies us as not just Jews and, and Hebrews and the nation of Israel, but Christians. We are not using God's name in an incorrect manner. But what if they flip that on its head? Opposite, you know, go ahead and use God's name in any way. It's just a description of, of what the world's been doing from like day eight. The point is, not only are these commandments descriptive, but they're prescriptive. It, it describes not only who we are, but what we do. It describes the fact that the church, God's people, are different. Now, we're not different, but we're different. How do I say, why do I say that? Well, we aren't different because we're the same human beings as everybody else that's in the world. We have a tendency to not honor God's name, to not put God first, to not honor his day, to, to disregard parents, to cheat, murder, lie, steal, covet, all those other things, speak ill of one another. We have that tendency. But yet we also have this God who says, I know you, there is forgiveness in your life. So as you live as forgiven people, these are the things that I want you to do that will describe, that will be, make you sacred, set apart, holy, different. See, see? We are different. We are sacred. We are set apart only for the simple fact of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. That's what makes us different, sacred, set apart. These, that's what the commandments are for. They're not only do this and do this, but they're markers of who we are. We are different than the rest of the world. And as different people of the rest of the world, we have this honor, we have this opportunity to look at you, if you're not part of this, to look to you and say, look, do you want to keep going in the same direction that everybody else is going? You're not unique. You're not special. You're sinful. And you're separated from God. And when you believe in Jesus Christ, and when you believe in the salvation that he has given to you, you not only will be saved, you will be made holy, you will be set apart, sacred, wonderful. Now there's the uniqueness. And now you are this wonderful person that God has recreated, remade, reborn. See what I'm getting at? If you have any comments, questions, please let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to engage in a dialogue with you about this topic and any other topic you want to talk about. All right, looking good. So we'll see you Sunday uh, in the next episode of The Word. We'll see you in study Bible talks. We'll see you in worship all on Sunday morning. We'll have a great and wonderful day. Have fun, everyone. Bye-bye.